welcome to the Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Santo. Today is Silver Quill. As someone with a sweet tooth, I find this issue highly offensive. I know, right? <laughs> and also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. Can't, can't we all just live in a world of moderation? No. No? No, it's either one way or the other. Yeah, have you seen the politics lately? Yeah, but, 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 hmm. But. <laughs> and also joining us today is Torterra. Woo, I can't wait to get it started. I just ate so many sugar. I can't wait to get it started. Woo, zoom, 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 zoom. So, so I'm in the middle. So I'm in the middle. Silver's at one extreme and Torterra's at the other. Mm-hmm. Okay. I tor- Torterra is going between extremes at the speed of light right now. Uh, it's gonna go fast. I'm super fast. <laughs> Since when? Since now, because I had so many sugar. Uh, look, he... Torterra is evolving into Sonic Torterra. <laughs> He's super effective. I've turned blue. What is this? He did say he wanted to have blue balls. <laughs> Next, you'll be appearing in a very questionable CG movie. <laughs> I can't wait to watch that one. Oh, okay. Now now that the movie's been brought up, I think my sugar's gone. <laughs> I'm not talking about Detective Pikachu, though. Oh, yeah, really? No, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Whew, but anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review the Friendship is Magic comic book issue number 63. In this issue, Ponyville gets swept by an anti-sugar movement that threatens to put Sugar Cube Corner out of business. So, before we head into the review, let's go into first impressions. Silver, what do you think of said comic book? Well, this one's definitely playing up the absurdity, so you're not meant to take it too seriously. Or, they're not presenting it in a way that you take too seriously, but... This is actually a very interesting historical piece as well. Oh. It inspired me to do a little background research, and I learned about Carrie Nation and her part in the abolition movement. Oh, what's that? Like, um, pardon my, what you would call this, um, ignorance, but what's that? Well, abolition was the, uh, was the movement to ban all liquor in America. Ah, the prohibition. Yes, that one. Prohibition, yes. I'm sorry, that's right, Prohibition. Goodness, so much for my historical reading. She was an early uh, proponent of it, and she took the most uh, hardline approach. Uh, basically, she would take a hatchet and go into a bar and start attacking the bar, uh, physical bar, and the casks, and she just wanted to destroy everything. That's assault. She could be jailed. And she was arrested, I believe, like over 20 times. The, 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 the cops should have done more than that. Like, by that point, she's already, like, yeah, maybe back then. Yeah, right? Well, it's interesting reading. Apparently, I need to brush up and strengthen my memory. But we can talk more about that as we go through. Uh, yes, 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 yes. So, anywho, um, Sabi, what do you think of Sid Comics? I, I just now remembered, like, a bunch of American history now. Thank you, Silver. <laughs> you, you brought back the nightmare of social studies. <laughs> Aha! But yeah, I I was kind of indifferent to this comic, mostly because I'm actually trying to lose weight right now, but I wouldn't go that extreme to try a ban sugar. But I, I'm also like thinking of that funny moment later on with Pinky switching mm-hmm. sides and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll get into that later because that was the only part that was really memorable for me, I guess. All right. And Tara, what about you? Well, see, this comic kind of hit me really hard, but not physically, but emotionally. Because, you see, even though I kind of had that little sugar rush at the beginning, uh, I'm diabetic. Same. Which, yeah, which means that and I actually didn't know you were diabetic, Safi, but basically can't have too much sugar else our blood sugar is going to go up. And we have to keep it in between and yeah <laughs> you know i i actually have to take medication and whatnot so i don't go on insulin <laughs> below five was it yes if it's below five that's very bad wait i thought it was above five is bad i mean above is t- bad too basically want you want to keep it between seven and five and as for me this episode was okay like how do i put this it was 
entertaining. It was funny to see some ponies gorging themselves and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. But I remember being a bit peeved when I got this comic. When I first sorry, when I first got this comic because I waited, quote-unquote, a month to get something fun and something awesome. But this is what I got. A slice of life story that says sugar is bad and whatnot. And, it's, and we have the villain... Who is kind of a um what's the word I'm looking for that won't trigger sweetie bot? A jerk, yes. So yeah, I mean villain was a jerk and whatnot, but after rereading it again now, eh, it's not that bad. It was fun. But anywho, uh, if you guys have not read this comic yet, pause here and go read it. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy the comics. So well, let's start off the comic with some funsies. So, Suga Cube Corner is celebrating their anniversary of being open for business for many, many moons now. And suddenly, sh- they hear this drumming sound, which is kind of annoying. And they check it out. It seems that some band of anti-Sugar League is strolling to town, creating their propaganda and whatnot. And it seems that them ponies are kind of looking for trouble by ridding the town of evil. Evil! Yeah, by pointing swords at ponies. I that, that's a little extreme. I know. Yeah, I think. But, you know, maybe it could be one of those foam swords. They look real, but it, it's not. I mean, you know. Uh, My Little Pony for kids. Yeah, a family movie. I'm going to say that the clean cut she delivers to a cake, thankfully not Mr. or Mrs. or Pound and Pumpkin, (laughs) is very much an edged weapon. Though I am impressed at her neck and jaw strength that she can wield such a thing. (laughs) And her diction that she can talk while holding it in her mouth. (laughs) No. I mean, Chira Lee's off to the side, like, oh, teach me your, your technique. I This would help in my classroom. <laughs> but, you know, see Silver, there ain't no clean cut. Sure it is. Just look at, uh, just look at the edge yeah, of the cake. But look at the aftermath. But so, um, by this point, uh, said pony here goes into Sugar Coop Corner and cut the cake. Like, dude, it's not your cake. You're not supposed to do that. And she just... Goes there and says, oh, look at this evil. The evil of sugar. You know, have templates. Read it and educate yourself, citizens of Ponyville. No. So, <laughs> so yeah. here's the thing about this. Well, here's the one of the first flaw I see in this villain, quote-unquote villain, is that we are not really introduced to her by her own words or whatever it is we are introduced to her via pamphlets because earlier on Mare Mare introduces herself saying that hello my name is Mare Mare the mayor of Ponyville and she just says get out of my way I feel evil and yeah we're introduced to her via pamphlet and her name is Tempress Frolwilder how do you say that Silver? Tempress Frolwilder uh, let's see her name is Temperance Flowerdew. Flowerdew, okay. So yeah, you, you see what I mean? We, we're introduced to her via pamphlet. So, that's not good start. No, that's terrible. No, nah, man. No. Nah. <laughs> but anywho, uh, she says that sugar is evil. The ultimate evil. Eviler than discord. Yes. It's, she says that sugar destroys your teeth uh, and your soul. And lead to severe weight gain. Oh my. That's bad. And she's going to outlaw sugar. Oh no. That's bad. Here's the funny thing. Uh, That line destroys your soul. That too is taken from Carrie Nation. (laughs) She would greet bartenders as good with uh, good morning destroyer of men's souls. So wait. I mean, she, she would basically go to bars and just harass all the workers this reminds okay if she were around now she would probably she'd be a hit internet uh, that's one thing but 
There's a show called What the Bleep is Wrong with You on YouTube by Radio Dead Air, hosted by Nash. It's a very interesting show. Like, for those who are of age, I would highly recommend go watching it because it shows that the world is a crazy place to live in. And someone like her would probably be in the show. Yes. The world is a vampire. Da, na, 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 na. <laughs> Meant to change. Uh, but anyway, carrying on. Twilight here just says, you know what? We don't have to worry. Um, Like, Sugar does all those things, but if you take it in a high amount, like, you, Sugar is best taken in proportions and stuff. Like, yeah, don't, don't worry about moderation. it. Moderation. Yeah, moderation. Thank you. Yeah, so we don't have to really worry about that one and stuff. And Rarity says, well, technically, darling, Sugar can cause all those things she printed. Rainbow Dash says, except maybe the part about destroying your soul. And Twilight just rebuts with, yes, that's true, but only if you eat nothing but sugar all the time. And everybody takes a look here at Pinkie Pie. <laughs> that dead stare. <laughs> Oh yeah, the group just, what? <laughs> yes. So, anywho, they all just kind of stroll out to leave the cakes be and let them clean up shop. Because, hey, this will probably uh, blow over the next morning. Next morning, and we see her in the streets stopping people from going to the store. Oh, goodness me. This is, hor- this is already harassment. Although, uh, Norman, I should correct, it's not the next day, it's one week later. No, no, the next morning. That's the start of oh, yeah. Then, oh, they, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, they say that, oh, this will pass by later. This, this will hold water one week later. They're still there. They're so strong. And the cake business is affected by this. And so is the apple because um, Granny Smith's apple pie are sold there. So, yeah, this is bad. Like, in all honesty, I just have to put it out there. If Twilight had guards guarding Ponyville, she would already be in jail. Well, she would have been the moment she brandished a sword at both the princess and two locals. Oh, yeah. That's true, too. There's so many things that problem could have been solved if Twilight just had guards. Call Tempest back. Yeah, call her back. Ask her to have guards. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, make Tempest leader of the Royal Guard since Shining Armor is with Cadence. No, no. Shining Armor has his own thing. Like, uh, have uh, the Princess of Friendship Royal Guard or something like that. Yeah. You could get Flash Sentry involved. Mm, Request a transfer. Mm, yes. <laughs> but... Then fans can be really mad. Oh, yes. Yeah, the... If that if that day ever comes, I can already feel the whole earth shaking. Be like, why Flash Sentry is not Twilight? You, you, you want to know something, guys? I, I, I really do hope that in Season 9, Twilight Sparkle hooks up with Flash. <laughs> That'd be funny. I know. But anywho... Oh, wa- watch the doom unfold. <laughs> doom. Anyway, you'll, you'll feel the rage and you could hear the cries of people. <laughs> yes. But anywho, let's continue on. Let's continue on. So, one week's pass. Uh, people still on the street. Uh, rain, uh, Applejack says to the cakes uh, follow me I have a plan Pinkie Pie kind of uh, goes sulk and thinks of solution to solve this problem in her bedroom and yay she discovers that hey since uh, what was her name again um, Temperance here is new to Ponyville she never had a welcome song and a party and Temperance here is a stick in the mud where she don't need all those kind of things because sugar is evil because uh, in her words... Evil backstory! <laughs> yes. So in her words, all those parties and all those sweets, they make them happy for a moment, but cakes, candies, cookie cupcakes, those things make you sick. Yes. And Pinky never thought about it that way and she's deflated and she has joined the dark side. They do not have cookies. Well, here, here's the thing. This is this was kind of the big moment for me in this comic, reading it over, because it speaks to something about movements. Here's one thing. Um, with Carrie Nation, the inspiration for, for Temperance, basically she didn't affect change directly. That was done by more conservative uh, members working for Prohibition. 
she was this symbol that kept it in the public eye. But to get anything done, you needed some people who were more conventional. You know, they could actually talk to people. Pinky's mistake is that she's going to Temperance ex in, in good faith, expecting a dialogue. But uh, Temperance has linked her ego, her finances, her life to this movement. She can't give that up willy-nilly. And she's put herself in a position where even compromise is seen as defeat. So this, this conversation was dead on arrival. It's a, it's a misdirection of efforts. You don't beat someone by going after a, the loudest person. You, you champion a movement by educating the public. And uh, that bit earlier where she's handing out these uh, pamphlets and Rarity says, oh, well, it's all technically true. Well, you can lie with facts if you omit other facts or play up certain aspects. So, yeah, sugar can do all that to your health if you eat it in overabundance. Yeah, but if you don't put that info there and just says sugar does that, it's kind of, you know, it's true, but do you need to know the rest? No, not for my end game. No, 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 no. Sugar's bad. But that's how you can lie with facts. A similar event here in America was when they wanted to add fluoride to water. And opponents... Uh, in a speech, in a debate, said Fl that can turn your teeth green. At which point, the uh, opponent, in her own uh, opportunity to speak, said, "Yes, it can if you drink an entire bathtub's worth in one sitting." It's like, well, that's an important fact you left out. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, I, I I appreciate Pinky's innocence and trust in trying to talk to this pony, but all it did was assault her uh, sense of self. True that, and with that, she, well, she was defeated and went to the dark side. But still, but still, um, I, I do agree with you there, Silver. Um, information is key. Like, in this day and age, information is key in doing whatever we need to do. So, yeah, having more information is power. But anywho, carrying on. Uh, two days later, the Twilight goes to Sugar Cube Corner to see how it's going. By the way, there's still a mass mob in front of Sugar Cube Corner, and there, there's a note for Twilight, and it says that come to the place where the apples grow. As for a swordfish, like your oh gee, in the know. I wonder where that is. Yeah, <laughs> it's in the very forest. Come to the place where the tropical breezes glow. <laughs> Rhyming. Come to the coolest place I know. <laughs> Strongwinia. Oh, but anywho. Twilight flies to Sweet Apple Acres and discovers that there's a cabaret in said barn of the Sweet Apple Acres. And Is it cabaret? I know, that's what I see in my head. Because, well, um, explaining things is not fun. So guys, you have to check it out for yourself because there's a sugar bar, there's piano playing, and Fluttershy... Seems not shy anymore about singing in public. Goodness me. She had one too many. Yep. So long story short, um, it seems that there's a club for sugar in the apple barn. And most of the people, or most of the pony here, uh, are scared that sugar is going to be outlaw. And they come here to, well, indulge in their sugary goodness. We get to see Rainbow Dash being hyper. Oh no, she's going to crash. She's going to get sugar rush and she's going to crash. No. Although I, I got to say, I love that it's Applejack who created a speakeasy. <laughs> Honest Applejack. This is how far they've pushed her into a speakeasy. corner. What's that, Silver? Oh, this is a term during the Prohibition. They were basically underground bars. <laughs> it's just like with Twilight and the Swordfish thing. You have to know the password to uh, come in. That's why it's called a speakeasy. You were supposed to... Uh, talk very casually as you gave the password so as not to draw attention. <laughs> How could you uh, not know that, Norman? Um, because... Of He's not American. True, true that. I mean, yeah. That's... Did you know that? Most Americans don't know our own history. <laughs> well, actually, oh, I, I, I learned about Speakeasy yesterday. <laughs> no, I, actually. <laughs> Wait, really? Or 
you're, you're joking. What was it? No, I'm actually serious. I learned I, I learned about speakeasy yesterday because a funny story. Uh, yeah. My brother, my brother and his fiance are having a stag and doe, but instead of calling it a stag and doe, they're calling it a speakeasy. And then I asked, "What's a speakeasy?" And they mentioned how back in the old days, how you have to like get a secret password or you need like a certain ticket to get into a certain club. So that's why they're instead of a stag and doe, they're calling it a speakeasy. Oh, okay. It's also from uh, this time that we got the term bootleggers, bootleggers. which is okay. it's very prominent in the uh, anime community. But it started a bit because you had to transport the liquor. People would strap uh, small kegs of alcohol to their legs and then wear very heavy coats. So they were called bootleggers. Okay, because when you say bootleg to me, to to me that means pirated or uh, counterfeit copy of well dvds blu-rays or whatever it is because it's kind of still prevalent here even though it's kind of dying out people still do buy the blu-rays and dvds pirated dvds oh yeah oh yeah uh, well that's where it came over i mean the the alcohol itself was manufactured illegally so it's illegally made goods being transported the more you know al capone built a criminal empire on uh, profiting off prohibition. Yeah, supply and demand, because people demand alcohol, and he's supplying it. But anywho, I, that's a lot of history lesson. I hope you've all enjoyed. Yep. There'll be a test later. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, but I hate anywho. tests. <laughs> that is if you remember and give it. <laughs> but anywho, uh, Twilight just looks around and is worried that everybody is gorging themselves on sugar. Like, this is too much. This amount is just not good. And it's not she, healthy. Yep, yep. She had enough of this and she wants to go to town and talk some sense into temperance. Tem- temperance. Temperance, yes. And Applejack says, Yeah, this sounds good, Sugar Cube. By the way, are you going to pay for this cake? <laughs> Even now. Uh, business minded. Uh, those faces are very scary, though. Mm-hmm. So, anywho. As Twilight walks back to Ponyville, she sees the effect that Temperance is doing or is happening towards Ponyville. People are not happy. People are grumbling. They are just pissed off. And and Twilight just discovers Pinky. She's joined the dark side and tries to talk about like this. Um, what's going on? And we get some backstory where back in the days. When Temperance was a young filly, uh, she grew up in a farm where it's super serious, serious business. And every time she passed by a sweet shop, she was tempted. One day, she went to the cake shop and overindulged herself on cookies and cakes and whatever it is, till she was sick for days. And in all honesty, this was her fault because she did not took stuff in moderation. But that's besides the point. So, Twilight just says that this right now, everybody's not happy. Like, the town is not happy. And Twilight just says to Temperance, like, take a look around. This is what you've done to our town. And with that, she realized the chaos she's done and is kind of sorry for what she's done. And Pinkie Pie says, oh, no problem, we forgive you. Now let's have party. And the funny thing is, all this is, again, based on history. Really? This 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 whole part here, too? Like, really? In a, in a sense. I mean, it's inspired by. Uh, Carrie Nation lost... Her first marriage did, uh, ended in large part due to her husband's alcoholism. So she had a personal vendetta against the concept of alcohol. And I think that was a big driving force behind her uh, involvement in Prohibition. Now, every, eventually, Prohibition, everyone looked around and they saw the consequences of the action. You had massive unemployment because you put a lot of people out of work. Uh, crime had been, had only grown stronger because now they were smuggling uh, alcohol to the public, giving them greater influence. And the enforcement costs were through the roof. So that had an impact on taxes. And finally, all looking around, everyone says, you know what? Call it off. And that's how we got our 21st Amendment. What was it again? Because uh, I'm not American, so I don't really know about that one. Let's see. I think it was the 21st... uh, Yeah, 21st Amendment ending prohibition. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Quill. Is this going to be on our test? 
Yeah, all right. Yes, and you have to see me after class. <laughs> what did I do wrong? I don't like your tone. Now, don't suss back to me. Ha <laughs> 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 ha, you got in trouble. Be quiet, Sappy. Miss Song, you can join him. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I do what I want. <laughs> oh, that's double detention. Okay. You're not going <laughs> to see me, but all right. Oh, boys. But hey. anyway. But anywho. Yeah, my mom kicks also... my ass every day anyway. Oh my. Oh wow. <laughs> but anywho, um next scene Tempress yeah, just says, um, thank you for uh, being so welcome and forgiving. And now with this with this uh found no- new knowledge, she will um uh, spread the word of sensible balanced eating. Yay. And Yay. P- Pinky, uh, she just have a few words with Pinky and Pinky just says, when nobody's looking, I eat a lot of vegetables. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> yes. So, uh, that episode of Comic Ends. So, let's head into final thoughts. So, Silver, what do you think, man? Like, you, I, by the sound of it, you did a lot of research on this one. So, what's your overall thoughts? Well, it's a, it's kind of a catch-22. If you have to read the history to enjoy this, then is the story working on its own? I think on its own, it's still a fun, silly, exaggerated conflict that still has a good lesson about moderation. But also, also, I think you can hold it up as an example of in a, in a discourse, you have to pick who you can t- really talk to. You know, who's open to actually having a dialogue and who's just looking to score points. Because I guarantee you going after uh, people who are just looking to get popular or increase their brand, that's a no-hoper. But it did make me interested when I learned that it, when someone pointed out this is based on a person of historical significance, I got to read up on it. And one of the fun thing is that when uh, BabsCon last year, I went out and I bought a, a mini foam hatchet and I signed it and gave it to author Christina Rice. <laughs> oh, boy. With a, a thank you, it's it's on her Twitter. Uh, it's in her office now, and she gave the most wonderful laugh because it, she did. She sparked some interest in American history, and though my memory can be a little shoddy, it's uh, <laughs> rereading my notes helps uh, bring it back. That's awesome because, well, here's the thing. Um, I I bet that um, Christina took inspiration from history, and no, not really. Or not really hoping, or not really thinking that anybody would pick up on it, and some people do, some people do, and the fun part was when you gave her the foam hatchet, <laughs> like ah, uh, my quest is complete. <laughs> well, it's also a tribute to history. See, uh, Carrie Nation, she made a living, so she through this, so she uh, had paid speeches, but she she also sold mini hatchets. That became her brand. And so she sold many hatchets to people at these speeches to, well, fund her life. Goodness knows what she would have been as a YouTuber. Oof. Oh my god. I can only imagine. Hey, on the bright side, I didn't say that word a single time during the last podcast. Shoot. You still have to see me after class, young lady. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. You can join me for a Bonix 101. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. It'll be the shiznit. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, again with that word. <laughs> but, but anywho, but anywho. Um, is that also? I, I think that's plenty. <laughs> All right, then. Bullocks. Sebi. Sebi, what about you? I, I'm still scarred from from the Ebonic. Skip me. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, Tara? Well, oh, Dizan. Well, in my class report for this episode... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed this. I mean, it kind of, it kind of sounded familiar, but too footloose when they danced. Uh, when they danced, when they banned dancing, and then after at the end, it's like, oh yeah, maybe we won't ban this, and you know, it's a happy ending, and like, it also sappy. Too, it's yeah, sa- it's sappy. <laughs> yeah. It's a sappy ending. It's a me ending. Yay. It's a me. <laughs> it's a me. It's a me. Sappy. Yes, sappy. <laughs> Carry on. Oh boy, but um, and like I, I guess the one thing I'll nitpick at is the um, temperance flower dues reason because mm. sure 
uh, she bans sugar because she ate so much sugar. It's like that one day. It's like, oh, no, I had to, I ate too much sugar. Now I must ban it. And then like, I like that's the one thing I'm pretty much nitpicking at over here. If I can't have sugar, no one can. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Sappy, uh, you ready to talk? No. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't talk, then Silva's gonna probably extend your de- detention. Um, All right. <laughs> I really don't have... Yeah, boy. Holla if you hear me. (laughs) I just remembered what lessons he's going to give me. Um, um, um... Sugar! (laughs) Spice! Everything nice! Uh, Here's the thing. Uh, How does this really affect you? I mean, since you're diabetic, like, does this really bother you in any sense? Because, like, no sugar... Not really. All right. Honestly, I've I've been at a point in my life where I've actually been very, very tempted by sugar because of my condition. Like, I actually went to an extreme when I first found out that I was diabetic. Like, no more sugar, no more carbs, nothing. Nothing <laughs> but protein and, and leafy greens. <laughs> yeah, that did not work out in my favor. Granted, I lost like 10 pounds, but I gained it all back in an instant. Like, the moment I started eating, you know, carbohydrates. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Actually, I can, I can agree with her on that because when I first found out I was diabetic, my mother baked cookies in the oven. Oh. And I'm like, why do you do this to me? Honestly, it's just like I still like, you know, eat sugar and whatnot now and then just and when I do, I keep it at a pace where I'm not like eating an extreme amount. Like when I was younger, I used to eat like two full bowls of ice cream or whatever nowadays i just eat like one tiny little bowl and i'm fine moderation that's the important part yeah it's that's what i've definitely learned over the years sometimes i'm still learning it but you know i just try to keep it minimal Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like you can still enjoy junk food but the thing is like how much you eat and I don't know. It didn't really like hit me so hard like Torterra did, but it it hit me in a way like, yeah, well, don't be either of these extremes. <laughs> All right, then. So anywho, and as for me, uh, this comic was a lot of fun reading through again. Um, the character temperance here is, well, uh, at first to me she was this. Really annoying character. Like, she is played over the top, like, really, really right wing, would you say, Silver? Right wing? I'm not going to assign a, a political spectrum to this. Everybody is arguing in extremes at some point. All right, then. But my point is that she's very extreme in her views, and it kind of annoyed me. But knowing that she came from history, Kind of, like, says, huh, all right, that makes a bit of sense. All right, then. And, yeah, getting to see the ponies break down without sugar. Sug- like they mentioned before, Sugar Cube Corner is the backbone of Ponyville, where it makes everyone happy and stabilized. Because if not, they'll do crazy things to be happy. It'll make Fluttershy sing in public. Oh, God. But in the end... You say that like that's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, you have to see what she's wearing there. Oh, my. <laughs> not to mention, Spike's the one playing the piano right with her, and he's not with Rarity. Oh, no. Rarity is gorging herself. Oh, no. Where uh, is Rarity besides... during this whole thing? Oh, she's gorging herself on multi-layer cakes. <laughs> oh. Besides, uh, if you're worried about what Fluttershy is wearing in this issue, just wait until oh, next one. Oh, my. Uh, what was the episode Perms. again? <laughs> uh, what's the next episode? Let me double check. Oh, wow. Oh, he said episode. He said episode. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, so did you. Oh, no. If you're only looking at the cover of 64, trust me, there's more within. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Is it Andy Price? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, can't wait. Wow. I haven't heard you this excited since I said the word Bayonetta. (laughs) No. (laughs) Yes? Well. Someone needs to put a leash on him. Anyway, mm, yes, anyway, mm. um, that's all my thoughts, like, fun comic, go read it, it was a lot of fun, uh, you may be annoyed at 
points. But hey, um, if the if you're annoyed by temperance, you're it does the job. But hey, anywho, silver. What are you going to do next week? Well, I think uh, you're hot to try to go see an Andy Price issue, but we're going to ask you to be patient because it's time to hop back to the TV show. After all, as we're recording this, season nine is fi- is approaching, and we want to make our way through season eight. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Besides, it's time to check in on the Pillars of Equestria and see how they've been doing with a rock hoof and a half hard place. Ah, yes, rock hoof. It's ha, been ha, a while. Ha, ha, hard. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> uh, we are adults. So, anywho. Are we? Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes? I mean, some people are still young here. Oh. Hi. Oh, you get double detention for that young man. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't you suspect your teachers. You can't detention me. You gotta get reviews done. I'm still on season five. Oh, join the club. That's your problem. Join the club, amigo. And you, Miss Seffi, you got to biggity bounce the abonics. Nah. Oh, man, that's wiggity whack, y'all. Yeah, don't be hating, player. Yeah, wiggity whack. Don't talk back. <laughs> and this is why I no longer do reviews. <laughs> But anywho, uh, yes, next week we'll be reviewing Season 8, Episode 21, uh, Rock, Hoof, and a Heart Place. So yeah, join us for that awesome review coming soon. So anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also catch us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at NBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver Wake and the Good Gentle Colt and Mares catch you. You can catch me on the Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, same for searching DeviantArt. If you go to YouTube and search for Silver Quill or After the Fact, my channel shall appear. And every Wednesday, you can find me posting either a comic review or editorial on Equestria Daily. Although the comic reviews may decrease re- soon because I've almost reviewed every back issue. I'm running out of material. That's true. Oh, no. That's true. Huh. Yeah, that, that's true. Like, what else do you have to cover, man? Five issues of Fiendship is Magic and Revisit Siege of the Crystal Empire. Oh, wait. That, that, like, that's six? Like, seven plus? Like, that's almost done. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, I remember Fiendship. Oh, memories. Oh, yeah, we did that in a... We covered all five issues in, in a recording sitting. marathon. It was exhausting. <laughs> yep. Fun, but one sitting. But yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, do check those reviews out on the EQDs, written reviews. So those are a lot of fun to read through. But anywho, um, Seppi, where can the good people find you? You can find me anywhere between DeviantArt, Twitter, Instagram. Just look up Anime Chrissy. And while you're at it, maybe you could go to coffee.com and send me $3. Also, with the username Anime Christy. Please. I, I need my money. I need... I need some way to live and eat. It is. All righty then. And Tara, what about you? Well, they can look me up on my Facebook, DeviantArt, Twitter, or Patreon under the name Tortera1324. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyBlive.com. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, uh, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys, for the absolute support. By the way, um, if you're not a Patreon supporter, you miss out on a very fun recording that we did and that was for the friendship is magic issue 61 and 62 like i think what there was five minutes worth of content where silver quill was speaking japanese (laughs) (laughs) okay i was speaking japanese as bad as well as i speak ebonics for shizzle (laughs) but at least those are for the patreons to enjoy and if you would like to enjoy said <laughs> said content, it'll be there for the Patreon. When did you start speaking of Bonics? I actually forgot. It's been a while. Yep. 
<laughs> so, hey, yo, yo, dog, my memory's broke. Well, you oh. can stop right now. <laughs> well, at least you didn't say up, dog. Oh, Dizam. Uptown girl. Oh, Safi, <laughs> you know you're being wiggity whack. Don't talk back. Now get your booty booty into the class. Don't talk about my booty. Only common can. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Well, hey, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. I am offended. <laughs> I have been Torterra1324. And we will guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the NBS show. See ya. There will be a test. I'm not taking it. I'm not ready for this. Oh, it is am. Everything in moderation, folks. Everything in moderation. Quick, Safi, let's make a run for it. Yeah! Uh oh, they're out the door like a shot. Uh, the yeah, heart. we're still alive. <laughs>